الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذ سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وإن تبدوا ما في أنفسكم أو تخفوه يحاسبكم به الله فيغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تآخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إشرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آمين لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم ربنا اغفر لنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا اغفر لنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا اغفر لنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد اللهم صل عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد اللهم صل عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد اللهم صل عليه وسلم أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو سميع عليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو سميع عليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا لمحمد النبي رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا لمحمد النبي رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا لمحمد النبي بسم الله والحمد لله والخير والشر بعشيئة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والخير والشر ماشيئة الله 
بسم الله والحمد لله والخير والشر مشيئة الله آمنا بالله واليوم الآخر تبنا إلى الله باطنا وظاهر آمنا بالله واليوم الآخر تبنا إلى الله باطنا وظاهر آمنا بالله واليوم الآخر تبنا إلى الله باطنا وظاهر يا ربنا وعف عنا محلنا كأمهن يا ربنا وعف عنا الذي كان منا يا ربنا وعف عنا ومح الذي كان منا يا ربنا وعف عنا ومح الذي كان منا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام متنا على دين الإسلام 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 يا قوي يا مدين اكف الشر الظالمين يا قوي يا مدين اكف الشر الظالمين يا قوي يا مدين اكف الشر الظالمين أصلح الله مور المسلمين صرف الله شار المؤذين أصلح الله مور المسلمين صرف الله شار المؤذين أصلح الله مور المسلمين صرف الله شار المؤذين يا علي يا كبير يا علي يا قدير يا سميع يا بصير يا لطيف يا خبير يا علي يا كبير يا علي يا قدير يا سميع يا بصير يا لطيف يا خبير يا علي يا كبير يا علي يا قدير يا سميع يا بصير يا لطيف يا خبير يا فارج الهم يا كاشف الغم يا من لعبده يغفر ويرحم يا فارج الهم يا كاشف الغم يا من لعبده يغفر ويرحم يا فارج الهم يا كاشف الغم يا من لعبده يغفر ويرحم أستغفر الله رب البرايا أستغفر الله من الخطايا 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشرف وكرم ومجد وعظم ورضي الله تعالى عن أهل بيته المقهرين وأصحابه المهتدين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاسات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس الفاتل الروح سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا رسول الله محمد عبد الله وآله وأصحابه وأزواجه وزريته وأهل بيته وإلى روح سيدنا المهاجل الله أحمد بن عيسى وأصوله وفروعهم أن الله يعذر جرب الجنة ويكذب مثوباته ويضعف حسناتهم ويحفظنا بجاههم وينفعنا بهم ويعيد علينا بركاتهم وأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعلومهم ونفحاتهم في الدين والدنيا والآخرة الفاتحة إلى روح سيدنا الأستاذ العظم الفقيه المقدم محمد علي من علي بعلوي وأصوله وفروعه وجميع ساداتنا آل أبي علوي وأصوله وفروعهم أن الله يعذر درجات في الجنة ويكثر مثوباتهم ويضعف حسناتهم ويحفظنا بجاههم وينفعنا بهم ويعيد علينا بركاتهم وأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعلومهم ونفحاتهم في الدين ودنيا والآخر الفاتحة الفاتحة إلى أرواح سادتنا الصوفية إنما كانوا وحلت أرواحهم من مشارق الأرض وإلى مغاربها أن الله يعلي درجان من الجنة ويكثر مثوبتهم ويضعف حسناتهم ويحفظنا بجاههم وينفعنا بهم ويعيد علينا بركاتهم وأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعلومهم ونفحاتهم في الدين والدنيا والآخرة الفاتحة الفاتحة إلى روح سيدنا صاحب الراتب القطب الإرشاد وغوص العباد والبلاد الحبيب عبد الله بن علوي بن محمد الحداد وأصوله وفروعهم أن الله يعمد درجاتهم في الجنة ويكثر مثوبتهم ويضعف حسناتهم ويحفظنا بجاههم وينفعنا بهم ويعيد علينا بركاتهم وأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعلوم نفحاتهم في الدين والدنيا والآخرة الفاتحة الفاتحة إلى أرواح كافة عيب الله الصالح ووالدين ومشايخنا في الدين وهذا من حق علينا وأموات أهل هذه البلدة من أهل لا إله إلا الله أجمعين وإلى أرواح أموات المسلمين وأحياهم إلى يوم الدين أن الله يغفر لهم ويرحمهم ويفرج كروب المسلمين ويرحمهم ويشفي مرضاهم ويجمع شملهم على الهدى ويؤلف ذات بينهم ويولي عليهم خيارهم ويصرف عنهم شرارهم ويكفينا وإياهم شر الفتن والمحن والمؤذين والمعتدين من قريب أو بعيد ويرخي أسعارهم ويغزر أمطارهم ويعطي كل سائل منا ومنكم سؤله وعلى ما يرضي الله ورسوله ويفتح علينا فتوح العارف ويختم لنا بالحسنة وهو راض أن في خير ولت وعافية وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الفاتحة اللهم صل وسلم
اللهم إنا نسلك الرضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم إنا نسلك الرضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم إنا نسلك الرضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار يا عالم السر منا لا تهتك ستر عنا وعافنا وعف عنا وكلنا حيث كنا يا عالم السر منا لا تهتك ستر عنا وعافنا وعف عنا وكلنا حيث كنا يا عالم السر منا لا تهتك ستر عنا وعافنا وعف عنا وكلنا حيث كنا جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خيرا جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما هو أهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خيرا جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما هو أهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خيرا جزا الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما هو أهله جزا الله عنا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وآله وصحبه وسلم أفضل ما جزا النبي عن أمته يا الله بها يا الله بها يا الله بحسن الخاتمة يا الله بها يا الله بها يا الله بحسن الخاتمة يا الله بها يا الله بها يا الله بحسن الخاتمة هو القبول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين وصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور قلوبنا وقرة عيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نوينا وتعلم وتعنيم وتذكر وتذكر ونفع والانتفاع والفارة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة عن الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نزك العلم لدني والمشرب السافي الهني يا وهب يا غني اللهم نزك العلم لدني والمشرب السافي الهني يا وهب يا غني اللهم نزك العلم لدني والمشرب السافي الهني يا وهب يا غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله بس الله سبحانه وتعالى for gathering us again studying uh, this religion studying the laws of purification may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our inshallah our efforts uh, in trying to be earnest in trying to be sincere in studying the laws of purification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that he purifies our deeds of any form of showing off any form of uh, in, of, of uh, qasid, any, any form of uh, desire or intention uh, there is other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah purify our intentions, Allah purify our hearts of the diseases that lie in, in, in the depths of our hearts that we know about, that no one else knows about, that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows about me, purify and cleanse us uh, to, the, to, uh, to what pleases Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He purify our, our lives of anything that He dislikes subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He purify our loves of anything that he dislikes subhanahu wa ta'ala and may he purify our speech from any word or phrases you know or uh, concepts that he does not uh, that he dislikes subhanahu wa ta'ala and our life is you know uh, we try and ask we, we try our best and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to focus our lives uh, to purify our lives to make it um, sincere only for him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala where our nafs you know our soul it, our, our desires become in line with just what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and mashallah this is how the ulama whenever they uh, they come into wudu and they speak about purification right they actually intend the purification in every aspect of the human being we all like to go move in front a bit
Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alright, last week we finished the parts of the wudu. Right. One thing that I left that I left out was be, uh, was the beard. I didn't mention. I didn't speak about the beard. I didn't speak about the beard in much detail uh, because nobody here has a beard. Uh, that's one thing. And but oh, but it is important for us to go through the beard. But because uh, to teach our own sons, uh, our own uh, brothers, in case they're not so aware of how do you wash the beard uh, with regards to the wudu. Alright, so when it comes to the beard, there are two types of beard in uh, in in when it comes when it comes to washing the face, two types of beard. Right, and that's why when it comes to different parts of our religion, things that are gender specific, right, like the loss of menses, the loss of uh, nifas is gender specific. Uh, loss of the beard right, is gender specific. Uh, when it comes to loss of our religion, both genders are to learn the laws of each gender. Right? Don't, don't say, that, oh, it's nothing to do with me, I have no beard, I don't care. <laughs> like, no, uh, you have to learn it also. Right? Because in case you know any, uh, any of your family members, especially for the men, they have to learn about menses and nifas, right? because in case they have daughters, they have wives, right? and they have to uh, teach these people about the laws. Right? Same thing about women, right? for our own sons right? and our own brothers. Sometimes people don't, don't, don't go out and learn. So they don't know what the laws of uh, uh, the laws of things to do with their own gender, right? So when it comes to the beard, right? There's two types of beard, right? There is a light beard and there's a heavy beard, right? So, <laughs> so how do you define what's a light beard and what's a heavy beard? It's very simple, right? So it, you don't weigh the beard, right? What you do is that you actually uh, it is it, in in Arabic it's called the distance of of uh, address. Right, so when you speak to a person, right, we just give an example. So when you speak to a person, uh, a comfortable distance of speaking. Alright, so for example, let me speak to her. Right, so a comfortable distance of speaking will be like this. Right, is this comfortable <laughs> or uncomfortable? <laughs> comfortable, right? Okay, uh, an uncomfortable distance of speaking is to go very near to her face and to speak to her. Right, so what is they say uh, the distance of, of address is a comfortable, a normal uh, distance where in society that's acceptable, right? So if I want to speak to one person, right? If I go a bit too far, right, I'm not having a private conversation, right? I just go a bit. So we, everyone, everyone knows what's the private conversation distance, right? and everyone knows what's uh, what's inappropriate. Right, so if you go a bit too near, this is so near my face. <laughs> and you, 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 you should when you move backwards, right, because they are too near. Okay, so this is how they, they judge. So at a comfortable distance, right, uh, between two people's face in a private conversation, so not too close and not too far, right, if I am able to see the skin behind the beard of a man, now of course, you know, right, uh, if, it's, if, it's a bit, if I can see his skin, right, that is called a light beard. See how they, how they, mashallah. Eh? <laughs> if I can't see the skin, it's called a heavy beard. Okay? That's it. Right? So, and this is important, right? Because for the light beard, right, the water has to pass through. Right? Through the beard. And right? for a light beard. For a heavy beard, they just have to wash over the beard. Uh, that's why it's important for us to know whether it's a light beard or a, a heavy beard. So, if you speak to your brother, and you see your brother, he takes his wudu, he goes over the beard. And you say, your beard is so light. You can't do that. You have to wash through the beard. Right? And then he says, who says? <laughs> because when I talk to you, I can see your skin. <laughs> right? And in a sense, you can tell them lah, like, whether their beard is heavy or whether it is light. It is sunnah for the men to uh, run their fingers through the, their beard. So as you saw, if you watched the video, how Habib did it, when he washed his face, he ran his fingers through his beard this way. Right? If, if you all observe his, uh, his video. Eh? Yeah, so so that is, that is about the beard. Right. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on from this chapter and going to go into the conditions of wudu. Anybody has any questions before I move on? Yes. You have to wash through. It means the water has to go through it. It means you have to wet. It has to go through to the skin uh, for, the, for the light beard. For the heavy beard, uh, because it's heavy, otherwise you have a drenched beard. <laughs> and you have, it's enough to just pass over, and then it's a sunnah to do this uh, takhalul, to go through your fingers to, to run through the beard. Uh, for someone with, with, a, with a heavy beard. Alright? Okay, yes. Okay. 
Okay, good question. <laughs> you wash your feet, your foot uh, three times, uh, three times, pinky, 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 or three times, pinky, 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 <laughs> and then three times. Yeah, just one time, one time each, not each time. Yes. No. <laughs> any other? Any other question? Same thing with the takhallul, right? Uh, you do like this. So after you wash both hands, uh, both arms, sorry, both arms, then you just do one and one. Right, so the one that you do after you wash both arms, you just do one and you do one. All right. Anyone has any other questions before I go on? Yes. Uh, <laughs> any other question? Okay, if no question, going once, <laughs> going twice. All right. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we're gonna continue for our if our chapter. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. All right. We've gone through all of this already. Okay. So today we're going to go into Shurut al Wudu. I'm going to read from the book. From the book. Zakhir al Musharrafa, Lil Habib al Alama, Omar bin Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafiz, when the Fa'an Allah will be Olumi Fidari Langal from the book The Glorious Treasure by the great scholar um, and know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Habib Omar bin Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafiz. May Allah benefit us by him and by his knowledge in both abodes to where he has said, Shurut al Wudu. شروط الوضوء ثمانية الإسلام والتمييز والنقاء عن الحيد والنفا والنفاس والنقاء الأعضاء عما يمنع بصول الماء إلى البشرة وأن لا يكون على على عدو ما يغير الماء والعلم بفرضيته وأن لا يعتقد فرضا من فروده سنة والماء الطهور والماء الطهور ويشترط ويشترط بدائم الحدث كسلسل البول والمستحاضة مع ما مر مع ما مر الموالة ودخول الوقت Right, conditions of the wudu. Right, this one might sound familiar because I went through the conditions of niat previously. Right, and I think I did it, uh, earlier on also speak a bit about conditions of wudu, but not entirely. Right, so the conditions of the wudu are eight. Right, so what's the difference between conditions of the wudu and what is compulsory in the wudu? Right, so what is compulsory in the wudu are the very acts of wudu. Right, for conditions, it is a state of being that has to be present. From the beginning of the act of uh, of of obedience till the end of the act of obedience, right? So it is state, and there's conditions, right? A state that has to be present from the beginning to the end of the act. Whereas the compulsory parts of uh, the acts of obedience are the set different elements right, in in what you do. So as mentioned previously, when we, for example, when I say uh, what are the conditions of the prayer, so when I say conditions of the prayer is that you have to be in wudu, uh, so from beginning to end you have to be in tahara, right? I say you have to face the qibla. And from beginning to end, you must face the qibla. And no matter what you do in the prayer, you must be facing the qibla with your chest. Right? Uh, these are called conditions. If I say what are the, what are the compulsory uh, components of the prayer, and then I say standing is compulsory, bowing is compulsory, prostration is compulsory. There are elements in the prayer. So you see, it is very, two, there are two different things. Right, mashallah, when I was teaching this once in Majid Khalid, uh, I, did not, I think I did not make it clear to the students the difference between conditions and wajibat and, 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 and the arkan. Right, what, is, what are conditions and what are the compulsory components? So I actually asked, and the book also wasn't so clear in distinguishing it. Right, so I actually asked, what are the conditions of the khutbah? Right, and then uh, so many of the students gave me the arkan. Right, they actually gave me the, what is wajib in the khutbah. Right, but what I wanted was the conditions of the khutbah, which is that the imam has to be in tahara. Right? The imam has to be standing. The imam, these are the conditions of the khutbah, Friday khutbah uh, for, for, the, for the men. Right? So when I, when I saw all the answers, I was thinking to myself, 
I didn't make it clear. <laughs> right? I, 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 and the book itself was not very clear of what is conditions and what is the arkan. The arkan will be, will be uh, about what the components of the khutbah, uh, about, about saying the alhamdulillah, about saying, about uh, advising the Muslims on taqwa, right? about making dua for the Muslims, right? about reading one ayat. Right? These are the components of the khutbah. That's right? so what you would, you would see. Right? So we finish the components of the wudu. Uh, the compulsory components of the wudu now are conditions and all these conditions are of course compulsory for them to exist from the beginning to the end of the wudu so you will not be speaking about sunnahs because they are conditions right? so at any point in time any of these conditions are not uh, uh, they are not present then the wudu is nullified all right so the first one that we have here right, is the condition okay so the conditions of wudu is uh, they are eight are you all on the same page with me? Right, okay. There are eight. Right, the first one is Islam. Right, so a person has to be a believer uh, before his wudu and before any of his uh, actions in Islam is, will be valid. Right, they have to be believers. Right, so even if a person has, never, uh, has not come into Islam but is interested in Islam, right, so them, for example, trying out fasting or trying out praying, trying out wudu, right, for as long as they have not entered into Islam, it doesn't count for them. Right, because if not, uh, in a sense, they have not entered lah. Right? It doesn't come for them. So Islam has to be there from beginning to end. Uh, just a side thing, right? When it comes to see someone has wudu, right, and they are Muslim, and na'uzubillah they leave uh, Islam, they murtad, right? And then when they left Islam, while they left Islam, someone speaks to them about it, and then they okay, they come back into Islam. Right, so within a very short span of time, they come back into Islam. The scholars say, do they have wudu? They say, they have wudu? Right, this, this, this is not, 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 not so much hypothetical because when the, whenever the scholars speak about these things, it happened. It probably happened in their time and then they will ask, do they have wudu? Right, what do you think? So if someone has, he took wudu while he was a Muslim. And he has wudu, right? And then he left Islam. Then he comes back into Islam. Does he have wudu? Hypothetical, uh, inshallah, it will not happen to anybody. Right? But hypothetically speaking, does he have wudu? The answer is yes. He has wudu. Yeah. But if I say he has tayamum, he has no tayamum. Okay, tayamum can't stand the leaving of Islam and come back into Islam. It's just FYI. You know? But inshallah, it doesn't have to have won't have any application eh, in our uh, real life, inshallah. <laughs> you won't have to meet anybody who did happen to them. And then like, they say, can I pray now? Do I have wudu? And you can say, yeah, you actually have wudu. <laughs> mashallah, you can actually go and pray. Right, mashallah. And they actually have wudu. They actually have wudu. Right, so anyway, uh, Allahumma sayyidu sayyidu Muhammad. Right, may Allah protect our, us and our family and our uh, friends, our children right, from ever going near the line between belief and disbelief. May Allah protect us. Uh, the second one is tamiz, right? And tamiz also because all all of these were actually conditions of the of the niyat, uh, so I've gone through them from before. Eh? Right? So tamiz will be discernment, right? the ability to discern between right and wrong, right? and we. Uh, so so since I've gone through them, I I will make you all answer my questions, right? So <laughs> testing, right? So what are the signs of tamiz? What are the signs that a child, uh, okay, so one of the signs is that they can tell their right from their left. All right. Any adult here who can't do that? You all can do that. Eh? You all have to look at your ring, okay, rings on the right. Okay, right. <laughs> all right. Uh, what else? Hmm? They can wash themselves right after they go to the bathroom. What else? They can feed themselves. What else? They can have a decent conversation. <laughs> they can have a, a meaningful conversation or something that is, you know, uh, nonsensical, <laughs> right? A meaningful conversation, right? Uh, that is about it, eh? Right? About they can tell what is food and what is not food, right? And we, and we, and we go in accordance to the, the levels, right? As to their mind becoming uh, more and more mature, right? So the first thing that usually happens to most, uh, most children is that they are able to tell food from non food. Right, so usually by the age of one plus, they're able to not put everything in their mouth. They can tell this is food, it is not food. Right, and then after a while, uh, they begin to be able to feed themselves. That takes some time. Right, maybe at the age of 
uh, you would say three, maybe, <laughs> right? Or more than that, four, three or four, right? And then without making a mess. So you can actually give them a bowl of cereal and they can actually eat themselves without making a mess onto themselves and around them, right? And then uh, telling right from left takes some time, right? Whereby they can remember which is right, which is left. Uh, holding a decent conversation also takes some time, right? especially if you. Like one, one, one example is that you will be able to give them instructions and trust them that they will do it. Right? So that they won't like, go off and they don't know what they, they do thereafter. Right? So you can trust them with instructions. They know what to do. Uh, so they kind, of, kind of mind. And of course, you don't have to check them in the bathroom. Right? And it means you feel confident that they have no nudges on them. Right? At, at that point, when this happens to, to, to a child, that means they've come into the age of discernment. Right, so for most children between the age of five to seven, some children even beyond seven, then they come into the age of discernment. Some, some, some up to nine years old, right? Then they begin to come into the age of discernment. Depends. It right, depends on your child, right? So for a child who is not mumayis, right, his niyat is not uh, valid, right, and his wudu is not valid for a child who is not mumayis, right? So even if you wudu can, right, you you do wudu on this child. Right, his wudu is still not uh, valid. Right, yesterday somebody asked me because they saw they saw this uh, child uh, stepping one of the books. Right, so and it's a, it's an Islamic book, so I quit, I took it from from the child and I put it up high. Right? and then she said to me, she asked me, Ustaz, do we like if, if my child you know takes the Quran or takes the book and begins to throw it around, do I take it away from the child? And I say yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do take it away from the child. Uh, you don't scold the child. Uh, because they're small. The child was like one year old, two year old. Right? They're, 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 they're too young. They, they, if you scold them, right, all they will see is a scary face scolding them. <laughs> That's all they see. They won't see that they're holding a Quran. And, they won't see, I, and I'm sure those who have children, you know, that that's all they see. They see this person shouting at them and they run away. <laughs> and they might run away with the Quran also. <laughs> right? So it's best that you just uh, take it uh, gently from them and put it higher and then reprimand yourself for putting the Quran within reach. Right? You call yourself you know, as the adult that, that was there. Right? Uh, Muhammad, in that situation, right? if you're on hit, then you hit the uh, If you are on menses and the child is holding, the child happens to have his hands on, 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 uh, uh, on the Quran, if you see that, that there is a possibility the child will fling right, the Quran, right, uh, or the child can't be instructed. If you can instruct the child, can you put it on the table? <laughs> like that, you know, like that. If, you can, if you can follow instructions, put it. Right? Otherwise, you just, uh, just take it quickly and put it up and then it's still far. Right? So same thing with, if you see a mushaf falling on the, on the ground. Right? So, so now it is between you touching it and bring it, putting it up right? or leaving the mushaf on the ground. Right? So what do you do? Pick it up. Now you pick it up, put it up and it's still far. Right? Because... Uh, there is a hilaf, uh, there, are, there are hilafs around this, this situation, right? but because uh, in a sense, it is okay, the whole thing about honoring the mushaf. Right? So, of course, you don't touch it when you're on your menses, so you have no wudu out of honoring the mushaf. Right? But now it's on the floor, there is dishonoring of the mushaf, so it is important that you pick it up. If you're the only one there, there's nobody else who could, who could, who could do it. Right? It's important that you pick it up, and then you istighfar after that. Right, inshallah. It's still it's the same. It's the same. Right. Uh, holding the mushaf with a piece of cloth is the same as holding it with your hand. It's the same. Yeah. Okay. Allahumma salli wa Any other questions? No. Okay. Alhamdulillah. All right. Uh, we have we've taken that from before. Allahumma salli wa Muhammad. Right. We have okay. One 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 naqa anil haydi wa nifas. Right. And to be clean from menses and nifas. Right. And this is in our uh, in our mazhab. Right, that it is, is you're not that uh, that of the conditions for the wudu to be valid uh, is that someone needs to be clean from their head and from their uh, nifas. Right, so you cannot be doing wudu at all. Uh, you can be doing wudu at all if you're on your knee, on your head or on your nifas. Right, that's understood. Eh? Right, number one, two, three. Eh? Number four. When al a'adai amma yamna'u busul al ma'i. Right, your skin has to be clean of anything that will prevent the water from reaching the skin. Alright? So, 
uh, for example, uh, if someone has uh, paint, uh, or in our situation, you know, there's kind of glues whereby the yuhu glue, or yeah, whereby whereby it's very it's very fluid, and then if it comes to your skin, it comes very hard, and you cannot bring it out. Right? It's stuck there. Right, so that kind of glue prevents water from reaching the skin. If that happens to you using that kind of glue, and it happens to you, it comes out here. You need to try and get it out. Right, so either you get, you know, I don't know, <laughs> what do you do? For me, usually I bite it <laughs> to try and get it out. Right, so but but be careful lah. Don't 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 don't. Let it happen to you so many times. You know, if one time happened to you, then you you know. But otherwise, you try and like really uh, pluck it out. When it comes to the ring, okay. Uh, I didn't mention it previously, but when, when you're, if you're wearing a ring and you're taking your wudu, right, if the ring is like this, this is not a tight ring, it's a, it's a loose ring, right? So there is no need for me to do anything because the water goes through anyway, right? It's sunnah for me to move it, right? It's sunnah for me to, to move it as I do my wudu. Uh, it's also sunnah for me to actually remove it, right? And do my wudu, okay? If the ring is a really tight ring, so let's say, all right. So now it's really tight, okay? So it's a really tight ring. You know the water will not go through, right? Then it is compulsory for you to move it up and down. If you can't bring it out, if you can't remove the ring, then you just uh, shake it, right? For the water to go uh, through. Someone asked me, I'm not sure in this class or someone else, somewhere else, they asked me about piercings, right? So, uh, okay, of course for ears, because ears is not compulsory in your wudu. Talking about nose piercings, right? It's because nose piercing is part of your face. Right, so it says here, nothing that can stop the water from reaching the skin. Right, so if the nose piercing is blocking part of your skin, then you have to ensure that the water actually goes underneath. If it's a small stat, usually the water does go through. Right? It does. But if it's like, I don't know, something bigger, <laughs> then it's, oh, so people do their nose, can Right, but someone puts something bigger on their nose and it's stopping the water from reaching part of the nose, then they need to actually remove it. Right, so depending on what kind of this is someone asked me the question I can I don't know what kind of nose piercing they have uh, for me to be able to judge whether or not the water goes through right, so just be careful about that and at best there's no need for piercings right <laughs> I mean if your wudu is going to be at stake and like you know it's not going to be proper and you have all these piercings around you especially people who have like, eyebrow piercings and all kinds of piercings I try to remove it I met this uh, lady she's a convert she just converted last week just converted last week Right, and she was telling me that, uh, and she had a lot of piercings going on on her, right? Uh, mashallah, uh, Singaporean Chinese, right? She came to Islam, right? And she uh, she came from one of our classes. But when I first met her, mashallah, I saw all her piercings before she became a Muslim. And then now, she, without her piercing, she says she feels so much freer. <laughs> you know, with all this, she had like, a lot of piercings on her, on her, on herself, on her being, you know, mashallah. So, but now she looks like she was like she looks. Uh, you would say that like, you know in Malay Basari, right, whereby she has a lot of a lot of light in her, and she feels so much, uh, mashallah, uh, so uh, so much so much lighter, you know, removing all of these things, mashallah. So anyway, uh, what prevents things from from reaching your skin? Okay, about nail polish, right? If you want to ask, I'm gonna pull out all the questions because <laughs> no one asking me questions. Okay, about nail polish. Okay, uh, of course, nail polish prevents water from touching the nail. Someone have said to me that someone told them, you know, who are these someones? Right, someone told, people tell them that uh, uh, this part of the nail is the nail and this part of the nail is not the nail. <laughs> I don't know if it's even mazhab. Azhar Hanafi said. Do you all say that? <laughs> no. I didn't hear that in Hanafi also. Right, uh, but they say that this, the part that's, that's white, that's the nail. And this part is not the nail. So if you paint this part, it's okay. And I was like, who said that? Okay, so I said, if it's a different master, I don't know. Right? But from what I know from Shafi and Hanafi, it, this is not, it's not there. Right? The nail is part of your hand. <laughs> right? So you need to ensure there's nothing on your nail. Um, be very careful of all these new age products <laughs> where they say wudu friendly uh, nail polish, right? Okay, and, and, I, and I will quote an answer from Habib Mashur. Okay, Habib Mashur, uh, he is the mufti in Hadramo, in Tarim. 
right? Uh, and and he has a seg segment on the radio that is very very interesting lah. It's called you know so ask those who know. It's a it's a verse in the Quran. Right? So ask ahlu dzikr, you know, those who remember and those who know. Right? So it's his, it's a segment on the radio where people do call ins. They ask Ustaz lah. Eh? Right? They could do call ins and then they ask him questions and then he answers their questions. Right? So there was someone who asked the question, Ustaz. Right, what is the ruling of me dyeing my hair blonde? Right, uh, you know, I'm I'm dyeing my hair blonde, right, but using a halal dye. Right. So first and foremost, uh, Habib, this Habib, Habib said that okay, halal dye. What does halal dye mean? If it means that the ingredients are halal, but does not um, guarantee that the water can pass through the hair, or does it mean that the water can pass through the, to the hair. What does halal mean? It means the ingredients are halal, right? Okay, so this guy said, okay, uh, wudu friendly dye. Okay, wudu friendly, wudu friendly or ghusl friendly dye. That means the water can pass through to the hair. Right, so for example, if someone wants to bleach the hair. Because when you bleach your hair, you don't actually put a layer over it, I think. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Right, you don't actually put a layer over it, right? If you bleach your hair, um, it removes the color, right, or the keratin that's on the hair, right, and then it makes it lighter. Right? But you, you spoil your hair, like, <laughs> so you damage your hair, right? But so, so he asks the question. So he first gives the ruling, and he says, okay, if there is no prevention of the water touching the original hair, so we can use the same answer for the nail polish, right? Then. Uh, they, they, they are starting to say that it is not permissible because water can penetrate, it can go through. All right. And then he asks a second question. And he says, then we have a next question which is, what's your intention in doing that? Right. If your intention in doing that uh, is to gain attention right, from people, to show off, <laughs> right. Uh, to and then he went into a few a few intentions that that is basically not right intentions. Why do you want to do that, right? So for example, in nail polish, right? Why are you doing that, right? And or, or just ask yourself lah. So no one's gonna say right or wrong. They're gonna say why. Why are you doing that, right? So what's your intention, right? So um, but for myself uh, personally, I don't trust all this nail polish. Right, nor do I use them lah. Right, but I don't trust them because I mean I think I don't know. I don't know. Allah alam. If anybody has ever done a test to really ensure does the water really go through, right, all this uh, wudu friendly nail polish. They say they put it on tissue and they put water on it and the water uh, doesn't go through or does go through. Or I don't know. Right, basically your entire prayer is placed on the line because you want to color your nails. Right, doesn't does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. Your whole prayer, if your wudu is not valid, your whole prayer is not valid. And then, just because your nails will be colored, right, go and do henna lah if you want. Right, use, hen use henna because water can go through. Henna stains the cells. Uh, so henna is okay. Right, but be careful about henna also. The black ones, you know the black, the, the later ones, the black ones, they put certain uh, chemicals in there. Um, it does not prevent water, but it harms your skin. Uh, it's harmful. Right, so just be very careful about this, okay? All right, uh, for people who always cook and knead, this happened to me when I was in, in, in Tarim. I used to make a lot of chapati. My, 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 my husband loves chapati. Right, so I used to knead a lot. Right, and it happened to me one time whereby, because the dough is the same color as your skin, right, so the dough actually formed a crust at the side. Right, so when I washed my hands, right, the dough didn't come off. And I didn't notice that, it, that it, there's, there's actually there's a hardened dough at the side. Right, so and I prayed and everything. Then after I prayed, doing my zikir, now I was like, what is that? <laughs> you see, this hardened dough at the side. Right, then you know that the water didn't go through. Because the, the hardened dough actually prevented the water from going through. So to redo the wudu and redo all the prayers. Okay, about the nails. Right, people who have longer nails. Okay, now I say, what about the nails and the dirt inside the nails? So when I wash my hands, right, this dirt is inside, will it? Prevent the water from entering. Why well, am I making all this paranoid right now? <laughs> now? Every single thing I have to take care of. <laughs> right, so, this is sunnah to keep your nails short. Right? It, is, uh, uh, it is unhygienic. 
right? First and foremost, to keep long nails, right? Uh, and also, it is scary right? to keep long nails, from my opinion. But anyway, uh, Allah Masih Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, Allah Masih Sayyidina Muhammad. So, if someone ha- has dirt in their nails, right? And when they do their wudu, they were not very vigilant, and they wash their hands and everything. Then they go and they realize that, and they pray, and they see, eh, my nails have some dirt inside. Right. The scholars say, okay, look at the dirt. If this dirt is from your skin, uh, so that means its origin is you. <laughs> you are the origin of the dirt. Right? It's from your skin. Then it's okay. If this dirt is from something that you held, right, from somewhere else, not from yourself, uh, then that dirt should have been washed away. Right? Because it could have possibly prevented the water from touching that part of your skin. Right, so even under the nails, it's compulsory for you to wash, especially your toenails. So people who have long toenails, right, make sure you clip them or during your wudu, the water goes in right, under the toenails. Be very careful, especially in your ghusl and everything. For us women, we do the compulsory bath once a month you know, at least. Right, so we need to really be vigilant about all these things. Right, the more, inshallah, the more attention we, we place on our religion, inshallah, uh, the more mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have on us when He holds us to account. Yes. Inside? Well, Masuk, it goes inside. Okay, if you feel that it prevents water from touching, because the whole thing is this part of whether it prevents water or not. So if you feel that it does prevent water from, yeah, like it absorbs water, and usually the water will go beneath it anyway, right? So if you feel that it will not prevent water from touching, then it's okay. So if you prevent, if you think that the water is, but it's best to just clean it out, lah. Uh, for your eyes especially, right? So when you wake up in the morning. Uh, or before you do your wudu, you just uh, before you do your wudu and before for you to actually clear out everything around your eyes, around your nose, everywhere. Just clear it out, right? And then, huh? Okay, that one is is because it was actually from the inside of your eye, then it came out. So while you were doing wudu, it didn't block the wudu. Uh, but it came out after that. All right, Alhamdulillah, yes. Ah, okay. So, yes. So, so about gels and creams. That's what you're saying, eh? Uh, so, when you put gels and creams on your face, if it does not form a film over your skin, but it's absorbed by the cells, right? that one is okay. Uh, but if it forms a film over your skin, like when I was in Tarim, because it's very, very cold, they used to use this gel, I can't know what it's called, but this gel actually forms a film over the skin. So the ulama there, the scholars there will say, well, we'll warn the people and tell them to remove the gel. Uh, you, need to, you can actually scrape it off. You can, if you scrape it, you can, you can actually get it off. Right? So you need to remove the gel before you do your wudu. Uh, because of the cold weather, your feet tend to crack up. So they always put this uh, film of, it's like a petroleum jelly. Uh, that kind of, that kind of uh, uh, things. But if it's absorbed by the skin, then no problem. Yeah. So when it comes to people ask about oil, what about oil? Uh, so uh, if you like to, like in the time of a or something, they always oil themselves. Right? Because of also cold weather, cold and dry weather. Right? So same thing. Oil doesn't actually form a layer on your skin, but it gets absorbed by the skin. You see, you can feel it, but you're not actually feeling it. It's actually your skin is getting soft right, by it. But it's not oily. Right? When you put oil everywhere and you rub it, does, is it oily? It's not oily, but it's soft. Uh, that means your skin actually absorbed it. Right? So when you, when you wash, there's actually no oil on it. Okay, a question about makeup. If someone puts on makeup and then wants to do wudu, must they wash off the makeup? 
right? The answer is because okay, on this account, if the makeup says or the package says wudu friendly, <laughs> all these all are the wudu friendly brands. <laughs> like this, I don't know. Allahu, Allahu alam, Allahu alam. I don't, I don't judge any of these brands. I've never tested any of them. Right? So it, um, if okay, so on on the account of can water pass through, you say yes, water can pass through. But on account of does it change the water? Um, because there's another condition that's coming up that the water cannot be changed. So when you do your wudu, the water that falls out needs to be white and it needs to be uh, colorless, without smell, without taste. The water must be as it is. Uh, so if the water changes, uh, then that is not uh, counted. The water, the water can't change. Right? So, so that's what, which is why before you take your wudu, you have to wash off everything first. And then you do your wudu, right? Because you can't change the water. Right? So when it, when it comes to makeup, right? If, even if you say it does not prevent the water from going through, right? But uh, does it change the color of the water? Uh, so if it does change, then you need to wash it off. So if uh, I were to bathe, uh, when you had done this, uh, and then I just take oil in my hair first, mm. so that it becomes softer after shampooing. Does it prevent scars? Uh? You will have to wash it off, right? So oil on the hair actually stays on the hair. Uh, oil on skin, skin absorbs oil. Hair doesn't absorb oil. But hair, hair holds the oil. Uh, so you need to actually wash it off. Yeah, so just wash it off. Okay. Uh, because, because skin can absorb oil? Uh, skin absorbs oil, but hair, hair doesn't absorb oil. Hair just holds the oil. Right, that's why for, for wudu it's okay because for wudu there's a small part it's enough right but for ghusl right uh for for bathing is the all all of the hair you have to be very careful about that lah right, inshallah right uh yes <laughs> okay uh her question is about facial products that have oil eh, they have uh, alcohol uh, in them do they invalidate the wudu okay uh, to invalidate the wudu is specifically things that invalidate the wudu, like uh, something coming out from your privates or uh, touching the hand of, an, of a man and so on. That, that this is what invalidates wudu. Does it prevent uh, the validity of wudu? It's a different question, eh? Right. So, so if you use facial products that has oil, it, alcohol, there's alcohol in them. Okay. The thing about alcohol is that. Uh, is that alcohol, right? In our mazhab, right, alcohol is najis. Right? So it is like you putting najis on yourself, you have to wash it off. Uh, so I'm not sure if the alcohol um, gets absorbed or not. <laughs> uh, you have to wash it off. So like for now, in our time now, right now we have a lot of hand sanitizer where it's all alcoholic. Right? So after you put the alcohol and you sanitize your hand, you can wash your hand after that. <laughs> right? Because it's, it's alcohol that's on it. Right, but of course, there are other opinions about this. So same thing with uh, perfumes, they're alcoholic. Uh, so alcoholic perfumes. So basically, in our mazhab, anything that is uh, ethanol uh, is, is uh, haram. Not haram, uh, najis. Uh, it is najis. Right, of course, haram to drink. Lah, right, but najis to actually have right, on yourself. Right, so just not, don't use it. Lah. That's why, mashallah, uh, the, 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 the scholars, they always, they always go on the side of, just be cautious. Just be cautious. Right? You go on the side of, of caution. Right, because all of these things, so you know, it really, right? Try not to use anything. Try, try, it, try. It. You try not to use anything, and whenever you do your wudu, you ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to keep your face clean. Right, inshallah. <laughs> try, just try, just try. Inshallah, try, try. Don't put anything on your face. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Yes. Alcohol everywhere. <laughs> like then it will always like get to you in a way. You spray and stuff. You spray where? Spray you wear lab coat, right? Yeah, but then there are areas that is not covered by lab coat. Okay, okay. So for as far as you can, you try to avoid the alcohol. And when I was the lab, lab was the same thing. You have a lab coat on. You have gloves, right? Usually, right? Uh, so try not to be to get the alcohol on your clothing inside. Just try not to. Otherwise, you can just uh, try to remove it. But at the same time, it can 
it will go under the because once it dries off, right? Uh, it becomes somewhat like uh, it's no longer a tangible nudges, but an intangible nudges. Uh, so we just have to just uh, yeah. Okay. Because there's, later on, inshallah, we will go into what is tangible nudges and intangible nudges. Right? So for tangible nudges, you have to remove all traces of your nudges. And for intangible nudges, right, you have to uh, uh, pour water on top. Right? To just pour, actually pour water. Pour water on top, just, and that's, that's enough for you. Right? If you know where it is. Lah. But if you can't detect it, then it, it will be under uh, what is, what is pardon. Lah, because you can't detect it. Right? So whatever can be detected will go under what is... Uh, uh, pardon. Right, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Right, so it says here, uh, and also to be clean, and that there's nothing on the limbs that will change the water. All right. So just like we mentioned about the, the makeup, if the makeup will cause changes in the color of the water, right, then the makeup needs to be removed. Right, and for uh, personally, I for personally, I would just say remove the makeup right, before you do your wudu. Because you want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it's nicer that uh, you are clean faced, <laughs> nothing on your face. And meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that way. Right? You don't have to pour makeup and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Of course, if you're out there and you want to pour makeup, for, to each person, to each his own. Right? But as far as you can, uh, wash it off. Especially the lipstick. Right? Wash it off. Mm. Yes, the wudu is, is valid And that's why there's a sunnah of three times The sunnah of three times is really like just in case The first and second was actually uh, not enough uh, Not valid mm. All right. Okay You can for as long as the makeup does not have any non-halal ingredient uh, or any najis ingredients, najis. So, so her question is like if I put on, if I took wudu, then I put on makeup, then I go out and I want to pray, right? Just be very careful that of course your wudu is still there. You still have wudu, but be very careful if your makeup has any najis ingredients. And najis is not just alcohol. It can also be the fat of animals. Be very careful. In Malaysia, they have brands whereby it's all halal makeup, and where they ensure that all the ingredients are all uh, halal ingredients. <laughs> yeah, they actually have in Malaysia. Right? But uh, uh, and I, I, I do know that a lot of makeup, to make it soft, they use uh, the fat of swine. Right? Or they use the fat of, of animals that are not halal animals. So the animals count as uh, carcasses. Right, so they are actually najis. Be very, so when it comes to makeup, it's a very, um, it's, it's a lot of areas by which it can really mess up your worship. <laughs> right, so just be very careful. The, the lipsticks that's out there, the common lipstick usually is not, uh, they, put in, they put things in there like, 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 like fat. It's all in the lipstick. You gotta check it out. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, uh, okay, if the fabric is made from animal skin or something, or fur, animal fur. <coughs> like jeans. Uh, then just be, just be careful if you're, if you're wearing... <coughs> Clothing that has, like you know, pig, made from pig hair or pig skin, you be very careful, <laughs> Yeah, don't, 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 don't. You be very careful. Be very aware what your clothing is made of. You know, if it's from if it's from plants, it's easier. <laughs> or from plants. For an animal that is halal, yes. For animal that is halal, their hair is not najis. For animals that are halal, for example, a sheep. And so sheep, goats, right? So that they are, they are, they are uh, fleece, right? So the, the the cotton from the the cotton wool, not cotton, cotton wool from the sheep, like the fleece, 
right? It will be will be will be not najis, right? So some people say, okay, what about like if you go to uh, places where they sell a uh, tiger, you know, like ti- tiger skin? Okay, first and foremost, don't support them. <laughs> you don't buy from people who kill tigers, right? Uh, I mean, it's all against against uh, you know, it is 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 illegal trade, right? Secondly, uh, is it najis? Yes. Right, because the tiger is uh, not an animal to be uh, eaten. Uh, it's not an edible animal in Islam. Uh, it's not an edible animal in Islam. Right, so it's not to be eaten. Of course, they can. can it can undergo. Diff, it can undergo methodolo- methods to try and make the skin uh, clean. Right, but basically, at best, stay away from this. Okay, one thing I want to mention also is if you go overseas, you find all these things. People who buy a crocodile tooth. Have you ever seen? And they wear like a necklace. Is a crocodile tooth over there? Right, huh? Crocodile skin. Uh, all of this has undergone, they, they, when, when they undergo um, this uh, tanning, uh, tanning, methodologies of, of cleansing, then it becomes uh, clean. Right? But, uh, like for example, that's only for skin. When it comes, when you speak about uh, the, what do you call it? The crocodile tooth or ivory. Uh, ivory is the tooth of an elephant. Uh, ivory is najis because ivory because elephants are not edible animals, right? And it's that their tooth that is being taken out. Right? So you're not supposed to get ivory things. <laughs> and there's a story of, of Habib once he was given uh, a stick made of ivory, right? And he was on a ship, right? And uh, and because it's it's najis, right? you can't actually sell it, right? You can't actually give it away. Also, it's very expensive. But you know because it was it's not, it's not just, right? So he just stood there and he just flung it into the ocean <laughs> and he got rid of it, right? And to show, show them also that don't support all this trade. I mean, it's all against the elephants. Just, so all these things, be very careful not to have it on you as you are uh, praying, right? So it, uh, just be very careful. Go on the side of, of caution. Uh, stick with cotton. <laughs> it rhymes, eh? Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. All right. Uh, okay. So just make it, make sure that there is no change in the water. Okay. I'm going to stop there for today. Hope that is clear. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Yep. Okay. We we'll stop there for today. We're going to read our istighfar for Rajab. Any questions? You can just text me. Yes. Any question? Yes. Mm. Right, cats. <laughs> I still have cats at home. <laughs> uh, okay, when it comes to cats, right, because cats are also animals that are not edible, right? So it, uh, it is said, right, that for the person who lives with cats, right, so that is 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 really difficult to prevent their fur from coming onto your stuff. Even though for myself personally, where I pray, the cat cannot go there. And the cats know, but they still go. Right? Um, but as far as possible, the sajada, uh, my prayer garment, right, will be cat-free. The cat cannot touch it. And when I pray, the cat has to get out of the room. Right? So to be to be to play safe lah. So if there is fur on your socks, right, or on your clothing, you have to remove the fur, right, as far as you can. For for the one who actually lives with cats, for those who don't live with cats. Right, then all the more you you don't have any excuse. For all of cats, it is said that you have you actually have a it is pardon uh, najis because you live with cats is is in, inevitable. You can't actually remove it, right, but not to be complacent. Uh, so for myself personally, I live with cats my whole life. I will and my mother also. We we will ensure the cats don't go near our sejada, our telekong. Right, remove the cat from the place as you pray. Right, and, and all that. So put, you, put in, you put in your own effort. La. But it, it, the answer of whether or not it's najis, yes. The fur is najis. The fur that falls off the cat. La. Whenever I say the cat fur is najis, people think the whole cat is najis. The cat is not najis. The cat is pure. As long as the fur is on the cat, the cat is pure. Right, the fur that falls off the cat, uh, that fur uh, is uh, najis. The water is pure. It's from a hadith from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
whereby uh, Sayyidina Aisha was praying and then there was a bowl of food there uh, and the cat came and ate from it. And then Sayyidina Aisha, she took it and she ate it. And then they all asked her, you know, O oh, Mother of the Believers, right, a cat ate from that food and you eat from it. And she said that I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi I'm right, praying in that water there and a cat came and drank from it. And the Prophet Sallallahu used that water for wudu. Right, so showing that cats are not dirty uh, on, in their saliva. Mm. Unless you're very sure the cat just ate something that is najis. <laughs> like some animal, blood, whatsoever. And it comes there. And disgusting. Uh. So eventually when we have cats, we do still have to clean up like some like, and orang. No, no, no. They will clean themselves. Unless you really was was that there's najis everywhere. Right, but for most cats, they are very clean. Cats are clean. Oh, I might be biased to cats. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Astaghfirullah, 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 wa atubu ila Allah min jami'i ma yakrahuhu Allah, qawlan wa fi'lan wa khatiran wa nadiran wa zahiran. Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Azi la ilaha illa huwa al-Hayyu al-Qayyu wa atubu ilayh. Allahumma inni astaghfiruka lima qaddamtu wa ma akhartu wa ma asrartu wa ma a'lantu wa ma asraftu wa ma anta a'lamu bihi minni. Anta al-Muqaddimu wa anta al-Muakhiru wa anta ala kulli shayin qadir. Astaghfirullah al-Jalali wal-Ikram min jami'i zunubi wal-Atham. Astaghfirullah al-Zunubi kulliha sirriha wa jahriha wa saghiriha wa kabiriha wa qadimiha. وجديرها وأولها وآخرها وظاهرها وباطنها وأطوب إليه اللهم إني أستغفرك من كل ذنب تبت إليك منه ثم عدت فيه وأستغفرك لما أردت به وجهك الكريم فخاتخ ما ليس لك فيه رضا فيه رضاك وأستغفرك لما وعدتك به من نفسي ثم أخلفتك فيه وأستغفرك لما دعاني إليه الهوى من قبل الرخص مما اشتبه علي وهو عندك حرام أستغفرك يا من لا إله إلا أنت يا عالم الغيب والشهادة من كل سيئة عملتها في بياض النهار وسوار الليل في ملاء وخلاء وسر وعلانية وأنت ناظر إلي إذ ارتكبتها وأتيت بها من العشيان فأتوب إليك يا حليم يا كريم يا رحيم وأستغفرك من النعم التي أنعمت بها علي فت تقويت بها على معصيتك وأستغفرك من من الذنوب التي لا يعرفها أحد غيرك ولا يطلع عليها أحد سواك ولا يسعها إلا حلمك ولا ينجيني منها إلا عفوك وأستغفرك لكل يمين سلفت مني فحنست فيها وأنا عندك مؤاخذ بها وأستغفرك يا من لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين فسجبنا له ونجيناه من من الغم وكذلك ننجي المؤمنين وزكريا إذ نادى ربه ربي لا تدعني فردا وأنت خير الوارثين ربي اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين وأستغفرك من كل فريضة وأوجبتها علي في آناء الليل وأطراف النهار فتركتها خطأ أو عمدا أو نسيانا أو تهاونا أو جهلا أو وأنا معاقب بها وأستغفرك من كل سنة من سنن سيد المرسلين وخاتم النبي نبي كسين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وتركتها غفلة أو سهوا أو نسيانا أو تهاونا أو جهلا أو قلة مبالاة بها وأستغفرك يا من لا إله إلا أنت وحدك لا شريك لك وأن سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك سبحانك يا رب العالمين لك الملك ولك الحمد وأنت حسبنا ونعم الوكي ونعم المال ونعم النصر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالعلي العظيم يا جابر كل كسير ويا مؤنس كل وحيد ويا صاحب كل غريب ويا ميسر كل عاسي ويا من يحتاج إلى البيان والتفسير وأنت على ما تشاء قدير وصلى الله وصلى الله وصل وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد بعالم من صلى عليه وبعالم من لم يصل عليه اللهم صل على روح سيدنا محمد في الأرواح اللهم صل على تربي سيدنا محمد في الطرب اللهم صل على قبر سيدنا وهم في القبور اللهم صل على سور سيدنا وهم في السور اللهم صل على اسم سيدنا وهم في الأسماء لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عانتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين الأمور الرحيم 
rahim fa in tawalla fa qul hasbiyallahu la ilaha illa huwa alayhi tawakkaltu wa rabbul arshil azim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin allahumma amin allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa ana 'abduka wa ana 'ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma sata'tu a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'tu abu laka bi ni'matika 'alayya wa bi dhanbi fa ighfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa anta allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa ana 'abduka wa ana 'ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma sata'tu a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'tu abu laka bi ni'matika عليا وابو بذنبي فاغفر لي فانه لا يغفر ذنوب الا انت اللهم انت رب لا اله الا انت خلقتني وانا عبدك وانا على عهدك ووعدك ما استعدت اعوذ بك من شر ما سنعت وابو لك بنعمتك عليا وابو بذنبي فاغفر لي فانه لا يغفر ذنوب الا انت الفاتحة أن الله يرزقنا عيما نافعا وعمل الخاص المعمول والتعليم ودلالة على الخدع ويصر بقبل النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإلى أرواح وعالمين مشايخنا وذوي الحقوق علينا وإلى حضة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الفاتحة سنة الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان يتكسل لي سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إلى أسر الله وعسل محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته